Hey guys, are you struggling with low energy, poor motivation, trouble focusing, and maybe feeling like your brain isn't what it used to be? What if I told you I tried multiple different biohacking techniques on my own brain for the past three months and found that some had dramatic effects on my brain waves and I felt a huge difference in my cognitive performance as well. I'm Dr. Cody, a US Navy trained psychiatrist specializing in neurotechnology and I've tracked my own brain data using an EEG headband to find out which biohacks truly boost my mental energy and which ones might be a waste of time. I put the five most popular biohacks to the test, tracking my brain's cognitive performance before and after each one. And let me tell you, I was really surprised by some of the results. Specifically, I measured my peak alpha brain waves, which are linked to focus, mental clarity, and how fast your brain can process information. Generally, the higher your peak alpha is, the more focused and sharp and energized your mind feels. And I was surprised to find that one of these biohacking techniques actually made my brain waves worse and dropped my cognitive performance. And another one actually gave me the biggest boost that I've ever seen. But before I reveal the most powerful brain hack that I came across, let's start with the one at the bottom of the list that totally failed to raise my brain performance levels. Ranking number five at the bottom of the list, you might be surprised, is sauna. I found this to be the least effective biohack for improving mental energy. I did a 30 minute sauna session at 11 a.m. during the day, and my peak alpha brain waves dropped from 10.4 hertz to 9.7 hertz, which was a full 0.7 hertz drop. For reference, my brainwave levels on normal day only fluctuate by about 0.1 hertz, so this was a significant slowdown. And I can tell you I felt it. Instead of being sharp and focused, I was actually sluggish and mentally foggy for the next few hours after the sauna when I was trying to get things done for my business. Now, I can already hear all you sauna fanatics saying, what the heck is Dr. Cody thinking? Sauna is great, and I completely agree. Does this mean that sauna is bad? Absolutely not. It's got a bunch of benefits. Research shows that sauna triggers things called heat shock proteins and boosts growth hormones, which may help with cellular repair and even support stem cell activity over the long term for health and longevity. But in my opinion, if you're struggling with low energy, brain fog, and poor focus, doing a sauna first thing in the morning or in the midday could make those symptoms worse. Instead, it's best to do sauna later in the evening when you actually want to slow down your brain to reduce obsessive thinking, worrying, and be able to relax and prepare for deep sleep at the end of the day. So sauna is great for winding down, but in my opinion, it's not ideal for peak brain function during the day. Now let's move on to biohack number four, which didn't lower my peak alpha performance, but it also didn't improve it much either. Ranking number four is stroboscopic light stimulation in the form of Neurovisor, which was a mixed bag for me in terms of brain performance. Where sauna actually lowered my peak alpha and is better for winding down, after testing Neurovisor multiple times, I found that it actually had no measurable effect on my peak alpha brainwaves. But that doesn't mean that it didn't do anything. My EEG data showed increases in beta and gamma brainwaves, which are linked to problem solving, mental flexibility, and even enhanced perception. I would say one of the more interesting effects that I saw with the Neurovisor data is that it increased brainwave variability. This is the amount of change in the voltage of the brainwaves in a given time scale. And one thing that we know that does this is psychedelics. Inducing those types of brain patterns help people break out of obsessive thinking, see things from a different perspective, and potentially improve mood regulation as a result. And there's also some research suggesting that stroboscopic light stimulation at the 40 hertz frequency could actually activate the immune system and help clear out plaques and metabolic byproducts linked to dementia over the long term. So while it might not be a peak alpha booster, it still could have long-term brain benefits. But I will tell you after a neurovisor session, I am a little tired. It's almost like my brain got a workout. Out. It's stimulating, but not necessarily in a way that makes me feel sharper or more motivated after the session. So I'd say that if your goal is to break out of a mental rut or use it for long-term brain health, Neurovisor could be worth looking into. But if you're trying to immediately boost focus and energy, this might not be the best biohack for that. Now let's move on to biohack number three, where we will see a real boost in peak alpha levels. And this one involves actually ingesting something into your body. Reiki number three, nootropics, the 
good, the great, and the unexpected. First up, I did test Alpha Brain, which is a popular nootropic from Onnit that Joe Rogan has endorsed in the past. The data showed a 0.4 hertz increase in peak alpha, going from 9.3 hertz to 9.7 hertz during the day, which is a solid boost. And I definitely felt it. My mind felt sharp. I was processing information quickly, and my focus was locked in. But there was one problem. It did make me feel a little jittery almost like too much of a push, like I was a little overstimulated, which made me want to take just one capsule instead of the recommended two. Made me a little nauseous as well if I didn't take it with food. And if I took it too late in the day, it would mess with my sleep. So while Alpha Brain works, it is something that I'd recommend taking earlier in the day and just make sure that you're not too sensitive to stimulants because it is quite stimulating. Then I tested another nootropic called Magic Mind, which is a drink blend with matcha, stress regulators, and brain boosting compounds. This one actually surprised me. It gave me a 0.7 Hertz increase in peak alpha going from 9.3 Hertz to 10 Hertz, which was an even stronger boost than Alpha Brain. And personally, I felt fantastic fantastic. Unlike Alpha Brain, which had that jittery edge, Magic Mind gave me more of a smooth burn with a relaxed, focused, high productivity, but no crash at the end of the day. I felt like it was a perfect combination of alertness and calmness, which is exactly what you want in a nootropic. So at that point, I was thinking, man, nootropics are the best, but then I tried something a little bit different and it changed my perspective. By now, you might have heard of Methylene Blue, which is becoming really popular in the biohacker community. It's actually been around since the late 1800s hundreds as a textile dye and was used as a precursor to a lot of psychiatric medications that we have today. It has some evidence for improving mitochondrial function and people claim that it is a cognitive enhancer as well. But when I put it to the test, the results I would say were pretty disappointing. Instead of increasing my peak alpha, it actually decreased my score a little bit from 10.5 to 10.2 hertz, which is a 0.3 hertz drop. And after I took it, it made my mouth feel a little weird. I felt a little sluggish and I didn't like how it was staining my skin. I felt maybe more calm when I was on methylene blue, but also a little less motivated. One explanation is that methylene blue actually slightly inhibits enzymes that break down serotonin and raise their levels. And while serotonin might be great for mood stability, it also can blunt dopamine driven motivation which might explain why I felt a little less driven while taking methylene blue. In general, if you are in good metabolic health, I wouldn't recommend taking methylene blue, but if you have long-standing problems with energy levels, it might be worth a try. Just make sure you don't take it along with any psychiatric medications for the risk of serotonin syndrome. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt, but after doing calls with several of my audience members over the last couple of months, I've come to realize that there's a lot of you out there that are feeling really worn out from the last few years. I know that when you get home from work, you just end up sitting on the couch, doom scrolling and wasting time. You know that you should be doing more and it's not that you don't want to, it's just that your motivation is completely zapped. I get it, your brain is fried and your energy isn't what it used to be. After doing all this biohacking on Tech for Psych, I've come upon a couple of methods and protocols that I think can really help people. And that's why I'm now offering a five day challenge course that I'm calling the Primal Edge Challenge, where I'll show you everything that I've learned over the past 10 years of both practicing psychiatry and being at the cutting edge of neuroscience with Tech for Psych. During this challenge, we are going to rewire your brain and body to increase your energy, focus, and motivation. This is not just neurofeedback training or meditation like I've offered in the past. In fact, even if you don't have a neurotech device, I think you can get a ton out of this program. It's a compilation of all the most impactful methods and protocols that you can do at home that I've developed over the past 10 years by trying a lot of different things and tracking my own progress as well as the progress of my clients through brain data. If you do have a Muse, it will be really fun to track your own brain health data through this process, and I'll show you exactly how to do that. I know you can do this, and the time for excuses has come and gone, so click this link below to join my Primal Edge Challenge. I haven't done coaching in two years, and even back then, the spots filled up really quickly, so make sure to sign up now. I want to keep this capped at a reasonable level so I can make sure to answer everyone's questions and do some one-on-ones during the group calls. So don't wait, sign up. I'm really excited to see you there. And now we'll get back to the regular content for your education and enjoyment. Moving on, ranking number two is sleep, the most reliable brain booster in my opinion. We've seen how nootropics can be hit or miss with some giving good results and others actually not working as well as we thought. 
But what if I told you that there was one biohack that works every single time, not just in the moment, but for the long term, and that biohack is sleep. It is the single most reliable way to increase your peak alpha levels. When I tracked my brain for several months, I saw that after a good night's sleep, my peak alpha levels could increase anywhere from 9.3 hertz all the way up to 10.2 and even to 11 hertz with a 0.9 hertz boost. But what's even more impressive about sleep is that it compounds over time. And if you're like me with a young child at home and they wake you up at night because they have an earache or something, you'll see those peak alpha levels go down. But if you get good sleep, you'll see that your brain isn't just temporarily refreshed, it's actually fundamentally improving. And the subjective experience, as you probably know, when you get better sleep is huge. You have better mood, you're less stressed, you're more resilient, you have sharper word recall, you find the right words instantly in conversation, you have stronger memory, faster recall of facts and experiences, less irritable, feeling calm and control with a better outlook. These are all the benefits that you experience when you get better sleep. Why does sleep have such a powerful effect on the brain? For more information, look at Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. Non-REM sleep recharges your brain. REM sleep forms new memory. Overall, it's clearing out toxins, repairing cells, forming new neuronal connections that will all support learning and memory. Honestly, if your brain is tired, your brain and body are going to be stuck in survival mode. And in that mode, it's a lot harder to retain information, stay focused, or feel motivated. So while there are all kinds of quick fixes out there, nothing beats deep restorative sleep. So if you're looking for a long-term boost in mental energy, focus, and motivation, start with consistent high quality sleep and you'll see those peak alpha levels rise week after week. But while deep sleep is the most reliable way to improve and boost cognitive performance, it's not the fastest. There's one biohack that gave me an instant peak alpha spike unlike anything else I had tested before and it might surprise you. Ranking number one, cold plunge the fastest, most powerful brain booster I've ever experienced. After testing multiple biohacks over the course of three months, one method stood out as the undisputed winner for an instant brain upgrade, and it was Cold Plunge. It wasn't just effective, it was by far the most powerful brain hack that I've tested so far. My peak alpha jumped from 10.5 hertz to 11 hertz. And here's the thing, when you're already at a high baseline like I was that day, it's harder to go even higher. So the fact that it boosted it up all the way to 11 hertz was just amazing to me. And it's not just about the numbers. When I do cold plunge, I just feel amazing. Right after the plunge, you feel this intense rush of energy and mental clarity. My focus just is razor sharp, my mood is euphoric and I just feel unstoppable for the rest of the day. It's like my brain just gets this reset where it really clears out the sluggishness and mental fog if it's there in the morning. And it's not just a short-term boost. My brainwave data showed that the peak alpha levels stayed elevated for at least an hour after the plunge, meaning that these benefits are sustained. So what's really happening here? Why does cold exposure have such a powerful effect on mental energy? Well, when you expose your body to the cold, it triggers a massive release of neurotransmitters, including norepinephrine, which boosts your alertness, focus, and mental resilience, and dopamine, which creates this strong sense of motivation and euphoria. It's this neurotransmitter surge that really invigorates your mind, enhances your concentration, and can sharpen your focus for hours after the plunge. It's basically a natural stimulant, except instead of getting a caffeine rush and crash, you get this sustained flow state that really lasts throughout the day. Now, if you've never tried cold plunging before, I get it, jumping into freezing water sounds really intense. If you wanna ease into it, start with a cold shower. At the end of your normal shower, just turn the cold water on for about 15 to 30 seconds. And over a couple of days, gradually increase that amount of time that you're willing to tolerate. Once you're comfortable, go up to a minute or two of cold water in the shower, and then take a look at doing ice baths or cold plunges. Your body will adapt over time, and I tell you, the first couple of times are the most difficult, but as your nervous system adjusts, it does get easier and the benefits get even stronger. I would say that cold plunge is an amazing tool, but it's not for everyone. If you have cardiovascular issues, dizziness, or other medical concerns, make sure to talk to your doctor first before trying it. Even if you're healthy, take it slow. The body adapts over time, but I know that you'll love it. So I hope you enjoyed that list and had some ideas about how you can improve your own brain health. In the coming months, I'll be testing red light therapy, hydrogen water, and other cutting edge brain boosting techniques. So if you wanna see which one actually works for me, make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on those videos. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit it. It really helps the algorithm to support this video. Also, if you want to work more closely with me, Dr. Cody, on your own brain health, check out the 
the link below for my Primal Edge five day challenge where we will transform your brain health in as little as five days using these science-backed techniques. Hope to see you there and on to the next video.